Hi, welcome back to my channel Quick Recap. Today, I am going to explain 65 movie, that is in science fiction action film. Spoiler ahead, earlier to the arrival of humanity, other extraterrestrial civilizations had already begun their exploration of the rest of the universe for life. Mills is currently on the beach of Samaras planet, where he is observing his daughter Navine, playing in the sand. As he speaks with his wife Alia, he informs her that he has taken on a two-year expedition office. Mills typically takes on brief expeditions, but on this occasion, he wants additional funds to cover the expenses of Navine's medical care. Afterwards, Mills trains Navine on how to whistle using her hands before eventually raising the topic of his upcoming journey with her as well. At a later time, Mills is the captain of a spacecraft that is transporting a crew in a state of cryogenic sleep. Someday, the spaceship faces a sudden meteor shower and is hit multiple times by pieces of rock from the meteors. As the spaceship starts into pieces, Mills hurries to the cockpit and sends an urgent signal, all the while attempting to navigate the ship towards the nearest planet for an emergency landing. The spaceship ultimately breaks apart into two pieces, and as Mills watches the imminent crash, his thoughts drift towards his daughter before he loses consciousness. After a few minutes, Mills regains consciousness and hears the ship's computer announce that they have landed in an unknown territory. Mills becomes aware of a metal fragment embedded in his stomach and proceeds to extract it, and then quickly seal the wound. Afterward, he wears his astronaut suit and starts inspecting the spaceship to assess the harm, and he finds out that the cryo chamber has been compromised. Mills takes a laser gun with him as a precaution and steps out of the spacecraft. As he walks, he comes across a body of water in which an enigmatic creature is swimming around him. Upon discovering the bodies of his crew members, he feels deeply saddened to realize that everyone has been dead. Mills checks the entire ship for check damage and realizes that the escape pod is situated in the other half of the ship, which has landed at a different location. He then sends out another disaster signal, stating that he has landed in an unknown territory. Feeling trapped and disappointed on unknown place, Mills picks up his gun with the intention of putting an end to everything, but memories of Navine flood his mind, preventing him from carrying out the act. Mills assembles all the tapes that contain the messages sent by Navine, with the sole purpose of listening to her voice once more. All of a sudden, the ship's computer system identifies a functioning escape pod nearby. In a rush, Mills look over the area and is amazed to come across Koa, a passenger, who is still breathing inside the pod. Without any delay, he takes her out of the pod. As they make their way towards the spacecraft, Mills observes a massive paw imprint on the terrain, which indicates that they have landed on prehistoric Earth approximately 65 million years ago. Consequently, Mills realization that he is now in the midst of dinosaurs. As the night sets in, the duo finally arrives at the spacecraft, and during the night, Mills dreams of Navine, who continuously asks for his whereabouts. Upon waking up the next day, Mills becomes steady in his determination to escape from the planet, with the sole purpose of rescuing the girl. Mills uses the spacecraft's computer system to locate the missing half of the vessel, but it fails to detect its whereabouts. Following this, Mills comes outside to examine the region and found some massive bones, which indicate that how much huge and dangerous creatures are present here. While exploring the area, Mills gets struck by a fiery geyser blast, as he had not seen it before. After he recovers, Mills' attention is drawn towards a luminous object in the distance and realized that the source of the light is the missing half of the spacecraft, which had crashed on the mountain. But as he thinks which route to take, he is suddenly ambushed by a child dinosaur. Following a hard fight with the dinosaur, Mills forces it down to the ground and repeatedly strikes it with his gun until it dead. After that he started hearing more noises coming from the nearby woods and decides to investigate. To his surprise, he realizes that Koa is not in the ship. As soon as Koa spots Mills, she begins to run, and he chases after her. However, they both stumble down a ridge, and as they get up, they discover a massive, dead dinosaur in front of them. Mills suddenly notices the trees shaking and soon spots a larger creature heading towards them. He quickly captures Koa and pulls her towards the ship for safety. As Mills tends to Koa's injury, he attempts to communicate with her about their situation. However, it becomes apparent that the speaking language of them is not the translator on the ship is not functioning properly. Then, Mills uses a red powder to draw on a tablet and depict the mountain with the pod, in an attempt to understand to Koa that have to go there if they want to escape. Koa understand and then she draws her parents to convey her concern for them, and for keep calm Koa, Mills falsely claims that her family is also there. Mills sends out another alert signal announcing that he has found a fellow survivor on the planet. Meanwhile, Koa founds Navine's recording on the computer. 
Koa watches them all and learns that Navine's health get worse during the first year of their journey and she had to be taken to a hospital. At the beginning of the journey, her messages were filled with joy and admiration for her father, but gradually, as time passed, her tone became bitter and resentful, blaming him for not being there for her as her illness worsened. As Mill sees Koa watching the tapes, he quickly turns them off and insists that they have to go. Mills and Koa start their journey on foot after ensuring they have enough supplies. They taking care not to make any noise and attract the attention of any dangerous animals. Through the difficult and tiring journey, Mills and Koa have come closer as he assists her when she stumbles or requires anything. Koa notices a red glowing object in the sky one afternoon, but she doesn't say anything about it. After a while, Koa grows tired of the long trek and picks some berries from a nearby bush. She playfully tosses them at Mills, seemingly for the sake of bothering him. Mills becomes irritated and set down his scanning tool to demonstrate that the berries are toxic, then instructs Koa not to play with them. At a later time, Mills feels a large insect land on his neck. He crushes it with his hand, but in doing so, he ends up with his fingers coated gluey substance. Mills attempts to wipe the sticky substance on a nearby tree, but the goo is so resilient that it causes him to lose his balance and fall down with a piece of bark stuck to his hand. Koa finds the situation amusing and laughs. As Mills reaches out to touch Koa with his dirty hand, their playful moment is cut short by the sound of a falling tree blocking their path. Strange sounds draw their attention to a nearby cliff, where they discover a young dinosaur trapped in a pit of viscous material. Mills thinks it's too dangerous when Koa runs to help, but Koa feels sorry for it and wants to help. So Mills ultimately aids Koa in freeing the small dinosaur more quickly. After being freed, the little creature takes a few steps then suddenly a group of predators attacks him and kills it. Mills quickly drags Koa to a hiding spot so that she doesn't have to witness the little dinosaur being eaten by the predators. However, Koa can still hear and becomes emotional, crying for her lost friend. After that, Mills and Koa continue on their journey and they reach a waterfall where they take a break to wash themselves and refill their water bottle. Mills is concerned about his stomach wound, but seeing Koa's determination reminds him of Navine, and that gives him the motivation to keep pushing forward. Koa comes across some beautiful flowers, and she insists on putting one in Mills' hair, annoying him until he relents. A few minutes later, Mills realizes that his scanner has lost track of the mountain's location. To get a better view and scan the area again, he decides to climb a tree. Mills notices a bug on his hand and shakes it away, causing the branches holding onto the snap and tumbling him to the ground resulting, his arm becoming dislocated. As Koa assists Mills in resetting his dislocated arm against a tree, a group of dinosaurs becomes aware of the disturbance and starts moving towards them. Mills urged Koa to put more pressure on his arm as they tried to relocate it quickly. As soon as it was back in place, Mills picked up his gun and prepared to defend against the approaching dinosaurs. Mills quickly gives Koa instructions to run and take cover, while he activates a few small bombs that eliminate half of the approaching dinosaurs. Mills fights off the remaining dinosaurs as they jump on him, shooting each one as they attack. As a group of flying dinosaurs lands near Koa, she quickly crawls away and takes cover behind a nearby tree. Mills rushes over and manages to save Koa from the attacking dinosaurs. He quickly eliminates them with his weapon, and then both catch their breaths and assess the situation. However, one dinosaur manages to hide itself and suddenly jumps on Koa from behind, dragging her away with its tail. Mills rushes towards them and uses his gun to frighten the creature. Mills notices that Koa is scared and decides to sit down, giving her some space to feel more comfortable. Mills remembers how he used to whistle a tune to calm down Navine, so he decides to do the same for Koa as it starts to get dark. The whistle trick worked and Koa responded with her own family's whistle. With her fear subsiding, she agrees to continue the journey with Mills. Following the long journey, Mills and Koa arrive at a cave where they plan to spend the night. Mills places sensors around their sleeping area to alert them of any approaching danger and checks the sky using his scanner. He finally spots that a meteorite is close by there. Since it is a tiny one, he doesn't feel concerned. As Mills monitors the sensors and scanner, Koa interrupts him by showing a tape she had brought along from Navine. Initially, Mills is annoyed, but eventually he agrees to play the tape as the sound of Navine's voice brings them both comfort. Mills is unable to sleep due to his persistent thoughts about the day Alia informed him of Navine's death, causing him to become emotional and fill with tears. Later during the night, the sensors wake Mills up, alerting him to coming in danger. After this Mills goes to check on Koa, only to find that a bug has made its way into her mouth. 
Acting quickly, he uses a tool to eliminate the bug and Koa is left to cough out the remnants. At that moment, the sensor starts beep loudly, and a massive dinosaur suddenly emerges outside the cave. Mills quickly grabs his gun and takes few shots at the giant dinosaur and then Mills grabs Koa's hand and rushes towards the back of the cave, where he had earlier noticed a small hole. Unbeknownst to Mills and Koa, a smaller dinosaur is tailing them as they desperately search for a way to escape. Having going through many danger and narrow spaces, they become disheartened when they come to the realization that they have reached a dead end. Mills attempts to enlarge a small space between two rocks by digging, but his efforts prove to be useless after a few hours, so he gives up. When Koa notices Mills giving up, she becomes furious and insists on trying again, repeatedly saying family. Despite Mills' attempts to explain that their family is dead, Koa cannot understand him. Mills, feeling helpless due to the lack of appropriate tools, suddenly comes up with an idea. He decides to use some bombs to enlarge the hole so that they can escape. He carefully hands over the remaining bombs to Koa for safekeeping while she sets out to explore. Koa manages to go through the narrow hole and after checking, confirms that there is enough space on the other side. So Mills decides to follow her. Unfortunately, it suddenly collapses, leaving him desperately screams in frustration as he loses contact with her. At that moment, Mills hears the dinosaur have come closely, so he quickly grabs his gun and rushes back to the previous cave. Once there, he employs his scanner to locate the dinosaur's position. As the dinosaur approaches him from the back, Mills anticipates the attack and opens fire, but the dinosaur strikes him, causing him to lose his grip on the gun. As the dinosaur bites down on Mills' arm, he fights back, struggling until he reaches for his scanner. He activates a high-pitched screeching sound that causes pain in the dinosaur's ears. While Dinosaur is distracted by the sound, Mills quickly gets back his gun and shoots it. Meanwhile, Koa successfully crawls out of the narrow hole. While on her own in the forest, Koa discovers a large bone that she could potentially use as a weapon. She then carefully wraps it in poisonous berries and a large leaf before storing it in her bag. A few minutes after leaving the cave, Mills becomes aware of a large meteorite hurtling towards them. Upon using his scanner, he realizes that the meteorite he previously observed was just a fragment of a much larger one, which will collide with the planet and cause a disastrous extinction event within the next few hours. Mills sets out to find Koa and soon hears her scream as she is approached by a dinosaur. Koa runs towards a tree trunk to hide while Mills hurries towards her. However, he stumbles and falls into a trap of quicksand. Mills attempts to shout out for Koa, but he gradually sinks deeper and deeper into the quicksand, until he becomes unable to speak. The sound of Mills' call reaches Koa's ears, and she bravely waits for the dinosaur to enter the tree trunk before throwing the bombs at it and running away. With the defeated dinosaur, Koa makes her way to the pit of quicksand. She bends over a nearby tree and offers her hand to help him out of the pit. After that both embraces in a tight hug, moment passes, Mills quickly telling her about the impending meteorite impact and the need to quickly make their way to safety. As night falls, Koa and Mills reach the foot of the mountain. Mills securely fastens a rope around Koa and she expertly ascends the mountain first. After reaching a safe spot, Koa carefully ties the rope around sturdy trees and rocks to ensure that it can support Mills' weight as he climbs. Moments later, they come across the other half of the ship. Mills quickly switches on the computer to check if there is a rescue vessel coming to save them. Koa sets out to search for her family and eventually comes across the cryotanks, which are all destroyed, filled with anger at Mills for lying to her. As Koa weeps, Mills retrieves a photo of Navine and reveals that he had previously lost his daughter while working, and as a result, he is determined to prevent that from happening again. Mills apologizes for his lies and Koa, who is crying, hugs him. Abruptly, the smaller fragments of the meteor shower start dropping down onto the planet, so Mills and Koa to scurry towards the emergency pod. As Mills is about to initiate the launch button, a meteorite fragment collides with the ship, causing the emergency pod to leaning down the mountainside and knock both of them unconscious. As Koa regains consciousness, she immediately tries to initiate the launch, but the computer responds that the pod cannot be launched in its current position. As Mills starts to regain consciousness, a massive dinosaur appears and starts to assault the emergency pod. Since the gun had fallen on the ground, Mills had to take the risk of leaving the pod to retrieve it. However, he was disappointed to discover that the gun was not working. As another dinosaur joins the assault, Mills takes cover behind a part of the damaged ship and reconfigures the gun. Mills is surrounded by the dinosaurs, but Koa comes up with a quick plan. She grabs the Navine tape and plays it on the scanner, 
which creates a hologram of Navine outside the ship. Mills, overwhelmed with emotion, starts crying at the sight of the hologram of his daughter, thinking it might be his last glimpse of her before his death. However, the plan works, and the dinosaurs are tricked into attacking the hologram instead of Mills. Taking advantage of the distraction, Mills emerges from cover and swiftly dispatches the first dinosaur, while the other continues to push against the ship in an attempt to reach Koa. Mills follows the second dinosaur and eventually takes it down after successfully landing several shots. The pod's position is now suitable for launch due to the force of the dinosaur's push. Before Mills can return to the pod, the dinosaur that he had previously shot in the cave reappears and starts pursuing him. Mills comes up with a strategy and dashes towards the geysers, leading the chasing dinosaur into the path of a scorching burst of water that hits its face. At that moment, Koa arrives and stabs the dinosaur in the eye with the bone she had prepared earlier, which causes significant damage. The dinosaur starts to flail around, and in the process, steps on top of another geyser. This time, the blast hits it in the stomach, causing severe burns that eventually lead to its death. After successfully killing the dinosaur, Mills and Koa rush back to the pod and take off just in time to avoid the devastating impact of the meteorite that causes the extinction of the dinosaurs on Earth. The pod exits the atmosphere and the autopilot steers it towards the gather point where a rescue ship will be waiting to pick them up. Mills closes his eyes and imagines a reunion with his daughter, and Koa comforts him by holding his hand as they head back home. Thanks for watching guys. Hits the like button if you enjoyed.